Welcome to Yell Fight Suey, college football from three friendly-ish rivals. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Yell Fight Suey. I am your host today, Scott McIntyre. Along with me um, is the yeller, oh, yeller himself, Andy Tom Chesson. Andy, repping the heart for yard goats out there today on, on the St. Patrick's Day edition. Uh, top of the baseball, top of the inning to you, lads. And here comes Jim with his Texas fight. So the fight to our... Our entire show, Mr. Jim Christopher, along there. I got me, I got me Emerald Siebel's on. Ah, it looks good on you with the orange in the background from the Astros, who happened to beat the Cardinals yesterday, three nothing in a spring training game. They did. Oh, and I don't I, really pay attention to final scores in spring training. So. Yeah, they, yeah, it I, just, I'm hearing Lucky Charms. I heard Paul McCartney for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Paul McCartney. Did you see Angela Lansbury? Because Angela Lansbury and Paul McCartney may be the same person. We're not sure. We're not sure. That that's for a future show, though. We're we're efforting that information. Um, He has a much bigger bank account. We're we're already off the rails. I haven't even gotten to the suey of the situation. (laughs) Uh, Representing the Arkansas Razorbacks here, guys. I want to. So first of all, I don't know about you guys. The weather up here is nuts. It was like 65, 70 degrees yesterday. It's about twenty five this morning. The wind's blowing out of the north. So if things come flying out of my nose today, let's please. (laughs) Just ask for forgiveness. Well, this- no, you're right. Like last night, we had uh, we we had dinner at Steiner Ranch Steakhouse. I think Andy, you've been there before, um, maybe overlooking Lake Travis. And uh, oh, that's the place you told me you'd never take me. Oh, because I would just embarrass you. Gotcha. No, that's not true. But oh, but no, it was this massive, massive, massive lightning storm and no rain. Like it was crazy. No rain. Like we were like, because it's up in the hills, and we were kind of like, should we start wrapping things up? Because I don't know how safe this drive down will be. No rain, but woke up, like you said, 30 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. It's kind of nuts. Yeah, it's no in the r- 40s here on March 17th. Um, that's not normal. Yeah, with no rain. But all I can climate's say is it's fine. Guys, don't don't pay any attention to keep buying your gas cars, guys. It's all good. What about those global warming? Why is it cold? Yeah, I just like the fact that Jim said no rain three times, and I was about to bust out in the blind melon lyric, but Andy went right over the top of me. So, so much for that. Oh, right, I guys. did that last night to Jessica. Hey, so. you, remember that <laughs> other, you remember that other song that Blind Melon had? No. No, you don't. No. No, and I'm glad. I wish I didn't know the first yeah. one. <laughs> um, hey, guys, I would love to talk about the weather a little bit longer, but there's a few more interesting things happening. Sure. The first thing, um, and I feel like we need to cover this because um, – it's kind of being dismissed in its importance and, and exactly if we think about what happened just a few months ago. And that's the Chris Beard hiring at Ole Miss. Yeah. So X is letting go. Ole Miss picked him up. Uh, just kind of want to set the stage and, and then um, get your feedback. So obviously Ole Miss picked up Hugh Freeze in the past and Hugh Freeze was there and Hugh Freeze called prostitutes from a work phone and lost his job. Okay. So that's one thing he was calling ladies of the evening on a work phone and he wound up being removed. He went to Liberty and blah, 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 blah. Now he's back at Auburn, but he did pay a few years penance. Chris Beard was arrested three months ago, less than three months ago. Yeah. Was let go from the university of Texas uh, because he choked and strangled and beat his fiance in the report. It said, Um, and now Chris Beard is the head coach at Ole Miss less than three months later. Jim, this happened in your backyard, so let's start with you. What's what's the feelings from? T- I mean, there's no penance being paid here, but what do you think? Look, I, I think there's it's two conversations, right? Like, I think we're all smart enough to know that what happened happened. I don't think whatever whatever happened that night, it's a dysfunctional situation, and either way. And for me, look, I guess I understand he was not charged, therefore he should be able to earn a living. I'm super glad he's not at Texas anymore. Probably where he landed makes sense because it's not as in the media spotlight. You can kind of begin to rehabilitate yourself that way. But just from, you know, watching what's been happening in sports, we saw it in uh, with, with the Mike Clevenger situation in MLB. Uh, can we just remind women that we really don't care about them anymore? I mean, are, are, do we just need to put a banner up at, at ballparks now? Is that the solution? I get it. Logistically, he needs to be able to earn a living. He wasn't charged, whatever. But to me, it's grossed out. I'm grossed out by it, and I'm super glad that he's uh, that he's gone. Andy. Um, and Chris- I went from a being a – I'm sorry, but I was a big Chris Beard guy. Oh, like, the things he was doing just to get students out. I mean, I know it was super free pizza to college kids at a basketball game. That was genius. Glad he's gone. 
Well, and let's face it too. I mean, the guy wins basketball games. He wouldn't be in that position had he not. He won at Texas Tech before that. He won at UALR in Arkansas Little Rock before that. He won before that to get himself to the uh, Little Rock job. He he he's 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 a winning coach. There's no doubt about that uh, on the basketball court. Andy, his opening press conference. Uh, he was asked questions about that night, and he said, "I really want to answer these, but I've agreed." with her that we won't discuss details of that night or other nights uh, that were involved in it. So I really want to talk about it, but I promised her I wouldn't. So any additional conversation just invites the Travis County DA to decide they want to start (laughs) nosing around in it again. So they're not going to discuss it. Um, I really wish that we as sports fans or Americans or however you want to divide that up, could get to the point where we understand that not being charged with something has nothing to do with whether or not you're guilty or innocent. Right. What it has to do with is the fact that an overworked DA's office may or may not feel they can win a case. Win a case. Feel they can't win a case, they're not going to charge you because there's no point in it. All they're doing is wasting taxpayer money. Um, And hurting themselves for re-election in most cases. That's a hard case to... I mean, if, she, if the victim's not going to cooperate, that's 100 percent. But Texas law doesn't that says she doesn't have to press charges for the D.A. to pursue what they were pursuing. Everybody agreed to back off. That's their business. I don't agree with it. It kind of is what it is. But for him to sit there and play like he was exonerated and playing on the ignorance of 99 percent of Americans who don't understand our legal system, um, just rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't know why I even watched any of his press conference. Yeah. I told you what was going to happen, but. I was thinking about it when I saw clips of it, Andy, I was thinking about you and I, 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 it's much like Spencer Rattler. I always do an Emily Nyman drop in this. And I feel like there's been several times when the three of us have been reminding people that not charged does not equal innocent and quit conflating the two. I need a ruling. Does mentioning the Spencer Rattler reference count as the Spencer Rattler reference? Because I don't know that it does. That's very Inception if it is. Here's why. He mentioned it and you responded to it. So therefore it counts. There you go. Okay. And I'm host. So I make the rules today. Fair. (laughs) I like that. Um, I mean, ultimately, Chris Beard is where Chris Beard's going to be. He's in a place that they have demonstrated that. As long as you can buy a burner phone and understand how to use it, you're going to be fine. Um, it's not like Lane Kiffin is some more outstanding moral uh, beacon of hope and wonder for the community in Oxford. So I think Chris Beard will do just fine there at, at Ole Miss. I will say uh, Lane Kiffin going out as Joey Freshwater to pick up college co eds <laughs> not equal having the Travis County DA show up at, at your front door. But still, e- either way, I think Ole Miss is just one baseball coach away with a whole bunch of baggage from completing the triumvirate and having everything terrible uh, there. I and mean, and if, I if, you, all if, you ask my, if you ask my volunteer relatives, whatever Lane Kiffin has done off the record is akin to murder. So it's fine. <laughs> I think it's yeah, and it should be sense. fine though. It should be fine because in all Miss, we wash away all sins. So anyway, from that, let's stick around. I know this is going to, you know, um, hurt Jim's feelings a little bit, but but March Madness is here, okay? <sighs> and well, actually, it's going to hurt Andy's feelings a little bit more because le- this is being recorded the day after the first round games, not the play in. Well, game. we dropped this the day of, so that's at least good. Exactly. So there's yeah. going to be plenty of basketball for everybody today and for two more days. Um. Not in college uh, days. Madness. So, uh, Andy, let's start off uh, Texas A&M. I don't want to rub salt in the wound. Well, I kind of do, but I'm not going to. Um, I I really thought your seating was wrong. I still think it was wrong. I think they took two incredibly hot teams with Texas A&M and Penn State and pitted them against each other and forced a good team to go out, a, a hot team to go out. Um, what's your thoughts? Um and- I mean, it's not all bad. It's not all bad news. I did find out this morning that Ghostbusters Hell's Kitchen starts filming next week. For is that, Gordon, is that Gordon Ramsay show? No, is that no. wait, whoa, 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 Scott, stop with the jokes for a second. It's a serious business. Is that really going to be the name, Hell's Kitchen? Yes, that's the that's the filming title. I'm so in. Continue anyway, to show everybody. So there's always light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> um, it, 
What happened last night is that Penn State had a better game plan than Buzz Williams did. They packed the paint, uh, dared our shooters to shoot. Our two best guys went something like five for 34, um, or excuse me, seven for 34. And they shot 60% from three-point land and 50% overall, and they were incredibly hot, and we weren't. And that's just how basketball goes sometimes. Um, would I like to better showing? 100%. Did it make it a bad season? Not in my book. So I mean, you're right. Buzz Williams does play a very physical brand of basketball and relies on rebounding. And if the other team isn't missing shots, yep. not a lot of rebounds to go get. Um, just one on one. Jim, yeah. First of all, so you know, Texas won yesterday. Um they beat and, toothpaste. And, well, I was about to say, I know they beat Colgate. And, I was more of a so crest people, guy myself. So when Jim messaged me last night, he goes, Look, we beat Colgate. Do we play crest or aqua fresh next? <laughs> And, but no, seriously, man, you guys are on to the next round. You lost your coach at the at the beginning of the year. You yeah. Coach all year. He's doing a great job. I actually did get to uh, watch most of the game because it was on the TV at Steiner. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, look, proud of the guys, proud of the horns. Obviously, you know, I think all three of us are really good at, at about being um, ride or die for ride or die for all our sports. It's not like. Like I know people that are Longhorn football fans and Kentucky basketball fans, and I don't know how that works, but that's, I guess, works for them. Um, they have no souls. Well, that's probably it. Um, to, to follow to follow the Twitter meme, they're probably Yankee fans and Cowboys fans too, right? And Lakers fans. But um, no, I mean, definitely excited for the team, excited for the guys. It does feel like different than other years. Um, and I do think it means so much more in light of the Chris Beard stuff that that this could have easily derailed the team and they would have had all the excuses in the world and nobody would have blamed them. But it does seem like they had a couple of weird losses at the beginning of this whole thing and then rallied well. And, um, you know, I don't know who, I don't know who they play tonight, but, or tomorrow, but. You get Penn State. State. You get the team that uh, Andy oh. had. So you, you, you get to. Maybe they won't be shooting 60% for you. So, you know, good yeah. luck with that. Yeah. Get to vanquish vanquish the A and M conquerors. And Arkansas beat Illinois yesterday. I had hope on that one going in uh, because Illinois shoots three points, three, shoots three point shots worse than we do. I didn't know that was possible, but it is. Uh, we still somehow held on to the game, even though we have a propensity to give up huge leads in the second half and be outscored by twenty points or so. But we held on. So Arkansas continues to play, and now we get Kansas. So Arkansas gets Kansas or Kansas is how they should be pronounced uh, in, in that state rather than them calling us our Kansas. Uh, but, hey, we, we roll on. There's still basketball to be played, Jim. Here here, here we go. We, we do. And, and I'm, I'm curious just from a culture perspective of, like, A&M and, and Arkansas. So every year that Texas has lost early in, in the um, tournament, it's been a sky is falling moment, right? Even though, so we spend all year talking about we're not a basketball school. And the only time we actually care is when they lose in the tournament. Is it the same situation with you guys or is it good showing move on to next year? Um, let me tell you about the meltdown that's happening on okay. Texags right now. Uh, we are the most ridiculous fan base when it comes to basketball. because, And I 100% agree that there are people in our fan base who understand college basketball, are huge fans and actually know what they're looking at. But the vast majority of us are about as intelligent with college basketball as the door in my office, maybe a little bit less. And it's just bizarre. We spent most of the year trying to figure out what net was and then arguing the net was wrong. And as you would expect, somebody like Stan Gable would come in a night from 1984 and say, net's for nerds. You should just go record and don't worry about anything else. And it's just, the eye it, test. I know a good team when I see them. <laughs> and it just went on and on and on where they're arguing about net. And then they became experts at net and decided they wanted to argue about seating for an entire week. When you can look at it and say we were underseated, you can look at the results last night and say, well, maybe not. Um, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you got in the tournament, you had your chance. You didn't make your chance. Now it's Buzz Williams blew it. And this guy sucks. And that guy's horrible. And we should, and if we had a better basketball facility, we'd have better players. And he's got to recruit more top 50 players. You know what? Every coach has to recruit more top 50 players. That's part of the deal. <laughs> Well, look, uh, so it's just it, it's a bunch of as, as intelligent a fan base, I think, as we are around football and definitely around baseball. We are completely ignorant when it comes to the sport of basketball, but we act like we are the most mistreated people on the planet. 
Um, and it's uh, frankly a little bit annoying because it's just been whining nonstop since the seedings came out. It's the ghost of Shelby Metcalf roaming the hall. Uh, Shelby was a That's very funny. underrated coach. He, he really was. Now, for, from an Arkansas standpoint, Jim, expectations are high around basketball okay. because we won the national championship in 94. And so after 94, when Nolan Richardson spoiled us, and before that, Eddie Sutton did. Um, so basketball is a big deal. Bud Walton Arena is one of the absolute best basketball venues uh, that you're going to find. Uh, you know, you can you can get, I don't know, it's like 18, almost 20,000 people in the place. Um, it It is the basketball pa- you know, palace of whatever they call it, of the Ozarks. Um, so expectations are very high. Plus, then we went through 20 years of the wilderness with Stan Heath and John Pelfrey and Lord knows who, what other, Mike Anderson, Mr. Mediocrity. Uh, never had a winning season, right, and never made it past the first round of the tournament. Uh, that's a problem. Right. Um, now you have Eric Musselman in place who's taken us to back-to-back elite eights. So that set the expectation. So Arkansas fans are that are old enough to remember the glory days are starting like, oh, they're here again. But this year, complete meltdown. Muss hasn't been able to make second-half adjustments, and we can't win basketball games. And they're forgetting <laughs> the fact that now a – we. He's increased expectations so much that a down year means you're an eight seed rather than a three or a four seed who's got a potential to go to the final four. Uh, so, yes, our Arkansas fans get real spoiled real quick. Okay. And forget that we're not that great most of the time <laughs> in a lot of things. And, and we your, ought to down just year was, your down year was driven by injuries. It wasn't like you just all forgot how to play basketball. It, it down down years driven by injuries and inability to hit three pointers because you have a very young team that can't shoot from the outside and therefore gives away second half leads. That's what it is. But well, you, you know, can score more than one kind of point. Just kidding, guys. That's a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. Layups are allowed. Dunks now. They've let dunk. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, guys. Let's That's let's keep not rolling. a donut, Jim. <laughs> let's keep let's keep rolling. March Madness is going to keep going. Me and Jim are going to keep playing. Andy's going to try to tamper down his fan base and and keep them from burning down Kyle Field or whatever they they do. Spring football, though. Hey, spring football is happening too, guys. Practice is underway. We all three play our spring game on wait for it April fifteenth, and we're all going to be in the same location on wait for. <gasps> Whoa, we are. 15th. So that's kind of cool. Any, give me spring football news from you guys. Get, 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 throw something at me. Give me something. Apparently, there. there's a competition between Manning and yours for the starting starting quarterback. The out of out of Sark's mouth that they there it is a competition. I don't know, Andy. I'd love your take on this because again, I think you're more dialed in than I am. I don't know how much of that's coach speak or how much of that is how much of that is to motivate yours. How much of that is really it's a competition. But apparently, apparently, it's an open competition with Quinn and um, Archie Manning or Arch Manning. I don't know Sark's personality well enough to know what he's getting at because he made what seemed to me from the outside to be kind of offhanded comments about um, or backhanded compliments about yours about you know he's taking the job more seriously, but you know sometimes getting a haircut and shaving your face isn't enough, and so. I did read where he said, um, you know, there's a competition. I also said, uh, read where he said your third string quarterback or second string quarterback from last year, who's been hurt, whose name escapes me right now, the guy from California. Yeah. um, Malik. Yeah. yeah. Murphy. Is that right? Yeah. I keep wanting to go to Malik Jefferson, but that's. We're we're going to go with Murphy. We're just going to go with Malik Murphy because that's what was said. So we're all three going to go with it. All right. So I've also read where Sark said he's got to be my number two guy. So I don't know which thing is right because he said all of that on the same day um, to different people. Uh, And I'm sure most of it's coach speak because you don't want anybody going into camp thinking they've just won. They have the job without the effort, especially somebody who does have Ewer's reputation, whether it's earned or not. You have that reputation a little bit. Um, having said that, it would surprise me greatly if Arch Manning takes a snap in a real football game outside of whatever Sam Houston, Texas State type school you're playing this year, unless everybody gets hurt. Um, because I don't think he's ready. I think if you look at the 2A level of competition he faces in New Orleans for all of his career, it's not even as good as it was when his uncles were playing. Yeah in new Orleans. It's, it's not great competition. So it's not just a step up to college football. It's a step five steps up. Yeah. 
I think that game's going to be really fast for him really quick. Can he handle it eventually? Absolutely. I don't think this is the year. No, I completely agree. You were, and I also wonder that you need somebody else in between those two guys. Yeah. And the third option, I I really think the third option could be, I think Sark likes to troll the media because the Austin media gets very entitled with what they think, what information they think they are deserved to happen. It's happened. They used to get pissed at Mac for only having two open practices. So the next year he had one, like, I mean, just keep, there is always the chance too that somebody is poleaxing Chip Brown again um, because <laughs> Texas A&M alive? is not leaving for the SEC. Thirteenth nope. anniversary. Nope. nope. Well, I mean, one thing's one thing's for sure. By April fifteenth, we're going to see exactly on the field. You're you're going to have a really good idea about Arch Manning. I kind of disagree with you, Andy, because simply the the style of football that's played in New Orleans is a very fast pace. So I don't think the speed of the game. Is is going to be that much of a um of of a change, but I I definitely think the level of competition and the fact that every you know, Arch to your point, football in New Orleans pre Katrina was different than post Katrina because there were more people there. There was there was just a bigger talent base there. Um, I I think he's going to look around and see a lot more people that are equally or more talented than he is, and that's a learning curve for any freshman. Sure. I, I think he's facing that. I, I also don't think that – I think you had a weird year where you had a ton of people injured. Uh, you, you don't expect those years to happen over and over and over again. And, and I mean, you Texas really went through the entire year uh, with a quarterback coming out on a crutch. It, it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So ho- hopefully that doesn't repeat, and yours does have talent. Um, Andy, A&M football, what, what's going on down there in this – I know everybody's – Probably taking the day off to deal with the Penn State yeah. loss last night from the basketball team, but but how's the how, how, what's the word for the football team? Well, Bobby Petrino are, is in town. We yeah. are completely uh, in the stage of uh, the um, strength and conditioning coach has people vomiting, and that's a good thing. And <laughs> junk all season workouts junk have never boys. been harder than this, and that's going to produce. And you've got some leaders developing in the uh, you know the quarterbacks leading workouts on his own. Nothing has happened yet. We haven't started any kind of spring practice. We did not start before spring break. We're doing everything after they get back this week. Um, So there is no news. Anybody pretending there's news is just because it's the same crap every year. Um, Oh, the strength and conditioning is going to be better. Uh, They're real gym rats down there. Yeah, you've got senior leadership that's really developing in the weight room. That's going to be a big deal. It's going to show. I know Texas a couple years ago, people were playing checkers or something, and that was a thing. Uh, (laughs) Are they going to change the offensive line? Sam Ellinger led a paintball board, game, and that board, means twenty board. wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but but let me ask you this, Scott: as you get ready to watch Arkansas, how much can you really take from a screen? Because I remember thinking, like, oh, look, the offense scored a lot of points. Great against our defense. Like, you know, no, it's exactly right. And, and you're exactly right, Jim. It's kind of like spring training with baseball to what we talked about early on with the Astros beating the Cardinals. You can't look at the final results. You're really looking at individuals. Sure. Uh, it, it, at this point in time, now for Arkansas, brand new defensive coordinator, brand new offensive coordinator. Spring practice gets really, really, really important when you're changing that on both sides of the ball. Um, I, I and especially whenever we, you have a senior quarterback like KJ Jefferson, who's been in Kendall Bryles' system the last few years, which is wide open run and and, and gun, um, or I should say RPO all over the place. Now you're bringing in someone Dan Enos, who's more of a pro style quarterback and been a quarterback whisperer, if you will, to some people getting them uh, to the league. And you've got him in KJ Jefferson's ear with new terminology, with new style of play. Um, it, it's right now, that's kind of the word uh, coming out of Arkansas. You know, head coach Sam Pittman saying we're not changing terminology uh, from what these guys are bringing in. But Dan Enos brings in his terminology, his system, he gets to run that. We're not trying to make him use words that we used to use. Oh, no, 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 just do your stuff, implement that. Same on the defensive side of the ball. So it's a bit of learning a new language. Yeah. Uh, for players. Uh, but, you know, it had been around the block. Hopefully the guys catch on pretty quick. And if not, <laughs> if you don't catch on, well, maybe you shouldn't be playing NCAA Division One football, especially in the SEC. So um, from an Arkansas standpoint, that's really how is the offense and defense gelling? What differences do we see? 
Um, you know, they're adamant on defense. I want a four man front. We're going to have blah, blah, blah. So, okay, let's see what you guys look like. And you got four weeks to, to put out a show and, and, and let me see how well it's orchestrated together. That's really what I'm looking for. How well does the offense and defense look to be orchestrating together? And does, has anybody taken a step back? Th- those, if I don't see signs of either one of those, Hey, I'm, I'm happy. We're great, but right. We 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 got to see. So I, I think in, in that that's when spring football gets really important, right? A and M had a change on on the offensive side of the ball, so they've got things they're going to have to learn in the next four weeks. Texas actually is probably the most steady of all of the teams uh, going into spring football because you haven't had that many changes. Your big news is you got more talent at the quarterback position. Uh, not bad. <laughs> not so, not a bad way to go. Um. Yeah, and, and guys that we're 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 getting close to time, but we got one more sport we gotta talk about. We gotta talk. I mean, n- neither none of or do we, Scott. Not I'm I've been over here doing research. Not a single one of our teams lost a single baseball game since the last time we have recorded the show. And I think that's worth saying. I think that's <laughs> worth talking about for sure. Um, so Andy, let's start with AM baseball. We're 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 from what you've seen so far, we're we're just about to we are the weekend away from going in or we're at uh, what am I trying to say? We're at the SEC. We're at conference play. That's about to start. Your 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 pre conference games are over. Just about what what are your thoughts on AM baseball up until now? Uh, we're not hitting, but we're getting there. Uh, pitching starting pitching has been better than we were expecting. Um, I still think that Schlossnagel will find somebody that's probably a better. Saturday starter, but there's still some still some playing to go on there. But I think we're solid on Fridays and Sundays. Um, I think our relief pitching has been better than we were expecting it to be. Um, some guys have grown up quickly. A uh, lot of good left-handers out of the bullpen, which you can't ever have enough of in, in college baseball. Um, but our hitting is going to come around. You're starting to see signs of it. We've had a couple of big injuries. Uh, Brett Minnick, who would have been our starting right fielder, got hurt on the very first at-bat of the season – by for whatever reason sliding head first into first base kids don't slide head first in the first base it's not faster it doesn't help you and all you're going to do is break your thumb which is what he did he'll be yeah. back around old miss um and then trevor werner who may may or may not be back this weekend is a guy who is potentially a all sec type of third baseman our big issue is that preseason games are over i know that's not what they're called in college baseball but let me tell you about my next three weeks, Jim. Okay. This week, we host LSU, number one LSU, with the number one MLB pick um, in center field for them and maybe one of the best college starting pitchers pe- pitching tonight in 45-degree weather at Olsen Field. Next week, we go to number two, Tennessee, for three games. The week after that, we host number three, Ole Miss, for three games. That is life in the SEC, and somehow we're playing – one, two, and three, the first three weeks of the season. Yeah. And you talk about expectations legitimately, and I don't think anybody would argue with this, if we got out of these three weekends with a five and four record, that would be incredible. You're missing a blue jacket and a duck, Nick Saban, talking about, we got one, two, and three. Come on, it's the SEC. We all play tough teams. Come on, man. I don't want to hear none of this. Oh, we play That's just, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not complaining right about it, but it's life in the SEC is that you're playing. If we look at our schedule, I've got of our 10 opponents, we've got, what, six of the top 10. Yeah. yeah. All I know is when, uh, when New and, Orleans and shows around, now, a real got, barn burner happens. And mixed in there, we've got a you know Tuesday game with Rice, and between Tennessee and Ole Miss, we get to host um, the University of Texas on the twenty eighth. So there's a lot. Um, very exciting times. This is the time last year where we started kicking it into gear, and this is more than anything else in college baseball, uh, more than any other league I've seen. It's very much a war of attrition. You're just going to have to yeah. keep winning series. You don't want to – if you can sweep, that'd be fantastic. But if you could take two or three from LSU, two or three from Ole Miss, and, and you know, come away not looking bad at Tennessee, that's a great, great, great start to your SEC season. So I remember that you guys had a lot more success last year than you expected. I also watched Spider-Man years and years ago. So I can tell you, Andy, with great power – comes great responsibility and a and just going to have to, to just going to have to, you know, do it. There, there's life, man. 
That's life. Them's the I'm break. not complaining about it. Don't get me wrong. It's just the reality of <laughs> I know you, you open oh, up I the know. schedule and go, holy shit. No, I know. I know. We're looking at the same thing later on. Where's SMU? Show. Where do I get to play SMU for a weekend series? <laughs> you have to go to the Big 12 to, to do that whenever they join there. I don't know if that's next year or whatever. Uh, no, I, I get it. The SEC is tough. It's, it's tough in every sport. It really is. Basketball's jumped up this year as, as, as well. So there's no doubt about that. But still, let's get out of the SEC for the time being and go over to Texas and to the land of Austin, Jim. Well, look, I mean, again, we've won every single game we've had since the last the last series. We don't start conference play until next weekend. So, again, New Orleans is rolling into town. It's going to be a boy. It's a barn burner. Me a real neat deal. But, but you, um, do, you do realize that New Orleans was one of the two teams that was involved in that uh, in with the, the video that we saw the umpire yeah. that caught the guy out on the ball that, that hit the dirt. So that that okay. that should be fun. Look, South but Wind. but, but I, you know, I, it's funny because I watch like I am I, I I'm I believe when you watch baseball, you don't get too high, you don't get too low. And and I still think it's a team with flaws. I think that it's a team that's figuring things out. We're starting to see that some guys can hit in key spots. I think they're starting to find roles for the bullpen. Um, I still think we're going to be able to make the tournament or, you know, make the postseason and maybe go to Omaha, but I don't think this is nearly the team it was last year. And I think um, anyone who expects it to be is an idiot. And from what I can tell from Twitter, uh, that's the most of the fan base. And uh, I was actually noticing um, the other day where, because I do follow Texas baseball and they're one of the ones I get the alerts from. And the sky is falling tweets when when things go bad and then the silence when things are going good which is i think the most ridiculous part of it all there'll be score updates there was a th- i think they walked a the game off with, with a three run home run over this time and there was like four responses but if they'd have lost that game there'd have been a hundred and i think that tells you everything you need to know um I, I love this team i think that again i think they're figuring it out but i do i don't think that it's i think there are going to be growing pains for sure particularly when conference play starts yeah, definitely of our three teams. You guys got the biggest rebuild right now, right? Yeah, you absolutely. Got the players lost a lot of, not only lost a lot of players, a lot of, a lot of talented yeah. players. At we the lost the of- best nickname in the history of college baseball. Hispanic Titanic, correct? Did I do our, was that it? Was That's it? it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, all right. See? See, I kind of. In see. Arkansas, though, you guys have the same gauntlet Andy's going through. Right. You got Auburn up next. We will. We get Auburn this weekend. They're moving up times because it is Northwest Arkansas and it is still March and it is still below freezing there right now. So they're moving game times up to try to not freeze people out. So uh, Razorback fans will be in their parkas and hog snouts uh, drinking plenty of ice cold Budweiser to uh, to make sure that they can uh, stay warm. Look, Arkansas still patching things together with a bullpen. We've got three pitchers. Uh, one is gone for the year. Uh, one of our, oh, excuse me, our Friday night starter gone for the year again, second year in a row. Uh, our closer is out for four to six weeks. So we're, we're just trying to hold things together. But the good part is it, with those early injuries, then if you can get off the injury train, you get guys back and they're really getting good and up to yeah. speed at the time the postseason hits. So a lot of hope there, a lot of hitting in the Arkansas lineup. The games we played in the midweek um, against Wright State and Illinois State and and I forget who we had in this week that gave us a bit of a tussle. We're still – they're scheduling tougher teams, teams that normally make the tournament but from lower and mid-major conferences. So the competition level has been up. It's been scaring Arkansas people because they couldn't find right state with a pith helmet and a guide dog. <laughs> so they're terrified that that means we're terrible. Uh, that's not the case. They just need to wait. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, it's typical – Arkansas season you know we get really hyped up for football and then we lose a whole bunch of games and we get really hyped up for basketball and we lose a whole bunch of games and then everybody's hopes go into Dave Van Horn and hoping the baseball team is going to continue to win <laughs> true so, all I know is the most but the most important Texas baseball update is I can now button all of my Texas baseball jerseys and Scott you remember uh when we went last year that wasn't always the case so um no but I, I can too because I just buy new jerseys one size up every year. <laughs> Um, they make an extender, um, like the air, the the seat belts at airplanes. Uh, you can order those for your jerseys. Um, I did just have a corn dog this morning in my office. Um, let me know that evidently A uh, and M controlled the weather to keep uh, LSU from hitting a, whole, a lot of home runs this year uh, at, at, at Olson Field this weekend. Okay. Uh, because- but did they use the same weather control device the Astros use in the ALCS? 
Well, you know, A and M is the bastion of liberal education, so you can. I do think we understand all understand where this is coming from. I do think we can all agree on how appreciative we are. Um, it, it, you know, as long as you're not having a terrible sinus day or something like that. The good part is you can smell the LSU fans coming before they get there. You know, you suddenly start wanting just to involuntarily grab packets of mustard and get ready to, and then oh, corn dogs. Yeah. That's where that came from. I, I wasn't sure, Jim. Did you immediately click into the idea when I said corn dog? What I was talking about? I thought you were absolutely got to have a corn dog for breakfast and got super jealous. No. So years and years ago, and it was really quite funny because it happened outside of War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas, where LSU and Arkansas played every year. But uh, the, a long time ago, over ten years ago, there's something written up on an Auburn site. I don't remember the site, Tiger Rag or something, where. Uh, somebody wrote an article about LSU fans smell like corn dogs. They just do, and continues on this, and, and it stuck. And so, one of my funniest college football moments was when LSU came to town, and in the tailgating, uh, an Arkansas fan had a gigantic aluminum tray filled with corn dogs, and out front it said "Free corn dogs to LSU fans." I think this is actually a little bit of on-air um, plan- future show planning, but. I think one of the things that, Scott, you and I need to work together is doing a preview of each SEC team that Jim has to face for the first time <laughs> or just the first time in a while from our perspectives. I would love that, actually. You know what? You, I think you just filled in our gap when baseball season's over. Before <laughs> exactly. Gets here. I think you just finished show prep for us, Andy. And, and I really can't thank you enough. Uh, <laughs> I really can't. Uh, listen, guys. Parting shots, Jim. Oh, uh, no, Jim, I know what I wanted to ask you. Now that you can fit into all these jerseys again, uh, what do you? What, what goes well with burnt orange, man? How, man you- well, it's funny because, yeah, um, nothing. And look, I love – look, I've even got it back here, and, and I was going <laughs> to throw it on. And I was just like, uh, nothing, 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 nothing at all goes with burnt orange. And I love the color. I, I really do. I legitimately love it. But uh, like Andy said on our text chain, our pre-show prep, which was this was, this was an item, cream, white, or navy blue – and then that's it. You see, I think today, though, today of all days, you can wear it with green. We can wear it with green. I mean, today is it's a little bit of almost a little bit. It's I do want to say before my before my time is up, because we did mention Blind Melon early. Shout out to one of my oldest friends, Risa, who I went to high school with. And I remember Halloween freshman year. She was the bee from Blind Melon. And I remember I will never forget that. So. And we're going to end on that note. Uh, Andy Hill and Jim's fighting. I'm suing, and Alyssa is having no rain. But, you know, her life's a little plain. Um, she likes watching something in the clouds gather rain. I don't remember. Um, it was it was terrible. God, that, that dancing bee on MTV. Anyway, we're out of here, guys. We'll see you next week. We hope you enjoy us. And Andy is spinning around in his bee suit. Don't watch.